Day 212 The solitary crack in the cold tile beneath my bed, once a solitary mark in this prison, now feels like a steady companion. A witness to 212 days of unrelenting torment. Each morning, his voice pierces the silence with a chilling good morning my pet, and each night, his command to not fight it is the last thing I hear before I sleep. I etch another tally mark into the grey brick, a daily attempt to anchor myself in an old reality that's slipping away. Clad in the uniform grey scrubs, carefully folded on the metal chair, I await the inevitable opening of the door, to start another day of my suffering. The first 20 days were a descent into isolation, food delivered in the form of a small raw protein bar through a slot in the door. Hope dwindled with each passing moment, until the sight of another woman wearing grey scrubs brought a flicker of hope. But the red band wrapped around her arm served as a grim reminder she was not an ally but a pawn in this twisted game. Like a predator, she dragged me through corridor by my hair to rooms of horror. Waterboarding, bone-crushing blows, and the haunting echoes of screams became my daily existence. Slowly breaking me until I was just as he wanted me, a docile doll in his doll house. And always, the voice, his voice, a teaser of the agony yet to come. In the depths of my pain, a true beacon of hope emerged a girl I named in my head, Jane, a fellow prisoner filled with fire and defiance. Our unspoken bond became a lifeline, something to hold onto as we endured the torture, our eyes meeting once and making a silent pact to defy our captor and reclaim our freedom. It was the memory of the glass room that fueled our escape plan a two-story room I caught a quick glimpse of just a few times on my way to meals. Hidden behind a steel door was my lighthouse in the middle of roaring waves of pain and loneliness. A way out of his sick and twisted dollhouse. Two stories high, with floor-to-ceiling glass, it taunted us with the possibility of escape as we drowned in the dark waters of this twisted game, sinking deeper every day. As the months passed, our silent communication evolved, subtle gestures masking our rebellion in plain sight. Slight clicks of the tongue, forks shifted sideways, peas moved into formations, extra steps taken, a whole new language to ease the torment. A whole new language to plan our escape. And then, on day 213, a moment I never thought would come just as I heard his voice tell me to not fight it, and I started to believe him, my door unlocked. Outside of it stood Jane. With hearts pounding, and bare feet to muffle our footsteps, we raced toward the glass room. With no promise of escape, but no reason to not try. The steel door didn't put up a fight. A shiver went down my spine as I realized it was unlocked this entire time. Was this a trap? There were no doors on the glass wall, but there was no other known way out. Without time to think, we ran toward the large glass wall finally feeling some sense of comfort for the first time in months. But as we ran down the steps, my stomach turned. There, standing at the bottom, was the man behind it all. In that chilling moment, I realized who he was. It was the puppet master. He was tall and thin, with a gaunt face and soulless eyes. His hair, long and greasy and streaked with silver, 
hung in tangled strands around his face, framing features that were hauntingly familiar. A sick twisted smile stretched across his thin, chapped lips and yellow teeth emerged almost sharpened by the shadows the moonlight cast upon him. You can leave, he said, in a deep whisper that sent shivers down my spine. But, you won't like what you see if you do. His words hung heavy in the air, laden with a sense of foreboding that made my blood run cold. I glanced at Jane, knowing there was no way I was turning back. We'll take our chances, I replied, using the little strength I had to spit out the words. With a surge of adrenaline, I made a split-second decision. Using every bit of power left inside me, crashing through the glass wall. For a moment, time seemed to stand still. And then, suddenly, I found myself standing on a bustling street in the heart of a city. As I made my way through the crowds of people, a poster caught my eye, its words sending a chill down my spine. Missing Jane Doe, it read in bold letters, accompanied by a photo of a young woman with strikingly familiar brown eyes and brown hair. As night cast a shadow on the city, I found myself wandering alone through a park drawing closer to a fountain at the heart of the park, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, just like he watched me in the dollhouse. And then, from the shadows, he appeared the puppet master. Before I could react, his hands closed around my throat, cutting off my screams as he dragged me towards the fountain by my hair. Panic coursed through my veins, but his grip was strong and no one was around to hear me scream. And then, with a cruel smile twisting his lips, he delivered the fatal blow, his words a chilling echo of the nightmares that had haunted me for so long. Don't fight it, he whispered, as I gasped for air but drowned in a deep, dark water. And then, in those final moments before I died, I saw it the crack in the bottom of the fountain, identical to the one in my room in the dollhouse. I woke up again in my room. 213 tally marks on the wall. And this time, I wouldn't fight it.